And you've spent 10 years studying what makes us happy in life. So when you take a look at your research, what role does money play into our overall happiness and well-being? Well, you know, there's the old saying that money can't buy happiness and money can't buy happiness, but money can buy many things that contribute very greatly to happiness. So it depends on how we spend our money. So if we spend it on things like our health, or our relationships with other people, or uh, you know, enlarging our lives in some way, contributing to causes that put our values into the world, that's gonna make us happier. If we spend it on things that do not support our happiness, then that, ha that money is, is not gonna be uh, uh, something that will contribute to a happier life. So I wonder, where do you think where do you think things will go from here? You know, during the pandemic, we all changed our mindset to like, you only live once and everybody starts spending all their money on services, less on hard goods. Do you think that is something that will continue or will revert back to the way we were pre-pandemic? Well, you know, that's such a fascinating question, and you're absolutely right. Like, especially today, people say things like, I want to spend money on experiences, not on stuff. Well, one thing is I think sometimes the, the line between an experience and a thing can be hard to draw, to, to draw. So, for instance, is like a dog a possession or an experience? Or is a dining room table a possession or an experience if now you're going to have your friends over for dinner? Um, is, a, is a camera a, a possession or an experience? What well, sort of both? So I think that sometimes it can be harder to tease out the difference um, between those two things um, than is possible, than you, than you might think. And I think every pendulum swings. And so, you know, people are sort of in this period now of like really wanting to declutter and really lighten their load. And human be nature being what it is, I imagine that that pendulum will swing. But I do think that it's really good that people are aware of the fact that just buying like your 10th pair of black boots is not going to do that much for you and that you the, really the challenge for us is to think like well, how can i mindfully invest my money as well as my time and my energy in ways that are likely to make me happier healthier more productive or more creative so it's really having that purposefulness and thinking about it not just being on like automatic or like the impulsive purchase which of course with money it's so easy to be impulsive and and then we regret right because you think oh gosh if i if Looking back on it, I wish I had made a different choice. So part of it is just trying not to do things impulsively so that we can do them more mindfully. Yeah, I was just thinking as you were answering, like, I wonder if that whole idea of money buying us happiness through services works until you get the credit card bill. Right, yeah, well, there's always that. And I mean, one of the most precious things that money can buy us is the freedom from worrying about money. Um, and so a feeling of security and a feeling of like, yeah, I can, I can pay for that and it's not a big deal. Oh, like I have to take my cat to the vet, but it's not gonna like, it's not gonna be a catastrophe if she needs to like some medication. Yes, like these are things that make us happier. Also, one of the things that the research shows is that a sense of control makes us happier. It's, it's, it, 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 we really want to be able to have a sense of control of our lives, of the way we work, and money can often help us have a sense of control. Whereas if you don't have money, you feel so much more buffeted about um, and, and a lack of control, and that itself um, undermines happiness.